okay so before i uh, get uh, into the definitions of low pass and band pass signals i'll just uh, uh, you know take some 5 to 10 minutes of time uh, to understand basic you know signals uh, that you have uh, you know might have already studied but i'll just re uh, uh, refresh the memories uh, just with you know a uh, couple of examples okay so you know that uh, a signal okay i can say this as basics of signals i will not get into any much details but what is required for me in this course will only be dealt okay so signals as you know uh, you know an continuous time domain signal x of t uh, whose fourier transform that we represent as x of f we might have also studied if x of t is a real and an even function based on the properties of fourier transform we know that it would be purely real if the signal is real and odd the fourier transform of such, such signal is purely imaginary okay and if it is neither even not odd okay if it is some some random signal obviously your fourier transform would be complex which would have both real and imaginary parts okay so this is from the fourier transform basics we we also know few of the you know basic signals uh, that you have and been uh, you know utilizing probably you have uh, we have done in your cs1 course as well so we have defined a signal called as a rectangular signal a rectangular function which is denoted as rect of t by t mathematically this is nothing but it will have an amplitude of a for all the values less than t by 2 and it will have zero in otherwise so in, in the other sense i can depict this signal in this fashion it's a rectangular signal it's kind of a pulse, single pulse over time domain okay so it will have an amplitude of a for the duration minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 okay. this is the definition of your rectangular function similarly you have also have you know seen a signal called as sync function sync t which is basically it's a ratio of sin theta by theta here theta is your pi t for t not equal to 0 and it is 1 at t is equal to 0 so you represent a sync signal in this fashion where it is kind of you know sign signal but which will diminish in amplitude as it travels over time so if it's c and its magnitude is 1 at t is equal to 0 okay so understanding of these signals are very much important as you will see you know uh, probably in this so t equal to 1 it will be 0 again right uh, integer values of t exactly exactly the zero crossing will be you know we call this as okay in this case it is 1 okay so to be very specific these are integer multiples of 2 by you know 1 by 2 and so on okay uh, we call since it's a frequency domain i can represent in this fashion since i have not specified any value of t as i already mentioned this would be 1 and this could be 2 and 3 and so on okay right so with that and you know, of understanding of these two signals we probably also have defined in you know, a signals as something known as signum function which is in a short form it is uh, you know written as sgn of t okay which is defined as has value of 1 for all values t greater than 0 and it will have minus 1 for all values t less than 0 and at t is equal to 0 
I can say it will have value 0. Okay, so this can be depicted in this fashion. Okay, if it's a signal function, it is my time domain axis. Okay, this will have plus 1 amplitude for all t greater than 1 and for all t less than 0, if it is 0, it will have value of minus 1. So at t is equal to 0, it will be average of 1 and minus 1, uh, which is, you know, 0 as we take as, as average value at t is equal to 0. Okay, so this is your signum you know, function in time domain. Right. So you might have also come across something known as, you know, triangular t or sometimes we, you know, represent this as, you know, uh, delta of t or triangular t, which is nothing but the convolution of your two rectangular function. Okay, so two pulses when they are convoluted, it will generate a triangle signal, where it mathematically it is denoted as it will have one plus t for you know, t varying between minus one and zero, and it will have negative slope for uh, zero to one and it will have value zero otherwise so i'm just you know rushing through this because you probably already are aware of this if you are not you know please you know ask any doubts if you come across any okay so for triangular t i can represent with simple you know triangle which occupies you know sorry, minus one to uh, one this being you know zero of course with an amplitude of one all right so one last signal that that we would be using a lot in immediately you know after this uh, discussion which is you know which is probably one of the basic signal that you have st you started you know, studying your signals and system course okay which is known as unit step signal different you know resources represent in different fashion but we'll be representing it as u suffix minus one of t you can represent as u of t it's not a harm i'm just you know going ahead with the definitions uh, which are mentioned in the reference book which is uh, by pro case digital communication by pro case i'm just you know following that notation which is actually one for all t on uh, a positive and at t is equal to zero we can say it will have you know average of zero and one which is half this is represented as we are familiar with this where pardon me for this discontinuities in the axis okay so i can say that uh, unit step function uh, uh, can cannot have you know we cannot uh, practically generate a unit step signal we cannot have a signal directly rising you know from certain amplitude right from t is equal to zero so practically speaking this will you know have some you know rise time and it will slowly rise and it will reach you know a value of one okay okay let's say in this fashion uh, it will slowly rise and it will attain a value of one after certain interval so this is the amplitude as one okay for all t greater than zero okay so i can so this will you know i can say i can extend this slope and i can you know, have on the time axis on the negative side so this rise time which will take around you know, small delta t of time to rise and attain a value of one uh, is very you know practically uh, you know representing the unit step signal but for all our mathematical analysis as you have used in your earlier courses that unit step signal is simply 1.0 so probably this is the case with for delta t much much lesser than you know zero okay all right so with this uh, basic uh, understanding of you know what signals that we are you know usually using in this uh, initial discussion of our course and probably in uh, uh, in other parts of unit 2 as well because we'll be using uh, the sync function for pulse shaping of the signals in your unit 3 
um, you know, we will get back to such kind of signals, uh, you know, in your unit three and uh, try to understand its frequency characteristics. And rectangular function is mostly used as, you know, a low pass filter, you know, characteristics in its frequency domain, although I have represented in time domain. Uh, but you know, uh, you know, you know, how will you represent in frequency domain in a very similar fashion? And signal um, function uh, is used, uh, you know, uh, uh, to convert your, uh, you know, if you have negative uh, uh, signals, you can, uh, you know, convert it into, you know, a flat. I mean, you can normalize the signal into in you know, a certain value for called as you know one and plus uh, plus one and minus one. And your rectangular function, you know, uh, probably will not be using this, you know, very extensively. But if you have two uh, filters. Uh, uh, low pass filters cascaded probably you know their time domain representation can be represented as convolution of those two uh, transfer functions okay so uh, such definitions uh, you know are will be used uh, extensively in your cs2 course and unit step signal finds its you know application to in order to extract only the positive uh, time domain or positive frequency domain information of a signal which has got both you know negative and positive frequency information with that, uh, you know, quick, uh, you know, uh, uh, run through with your basic signals. You are also expected to know a certain uh, uh, properties of Fourier transform. In addition to these, I'll not be listing down them, uh, but I'll just you know say that uh, what is required would be your uh, understanding of you know properties of Fourier transform, which will be used you know very much uh, in our course. And you would also be expected to, you know, know uh, probably the first part of this would be uh, the Fourier transform of any signal given of a signal. Probably, if you have a good knowledge of or a fair knowledge of uh, Fourier transforms of all standard signals that I have listed, uh, that would be more than enough. Uh, in addition to the properties of Fourier transform. Okay, so with that. Uh, knowledge probably i'll be you know uh, listing down uh, for a transform as and when it is required uh, in our you know mathematical analysis of uh, the functional blocks in digital communication system uh, that would be enough if you, if you uh, uh, are really not you know able to recover or recollect uh, what you have been learned in your you know fourth semester course